because we know that you have joined us on this journey towards success. And we want to put the right tools and right information in front of you to go ahead and get you started on that. So we want to as well acknowledge the individuals who have topped the charts. That is within our entire team at Lentless Nationwide under the leadership and guidance of our senior vice president, Mr. Xavier Marrero, a gentleman who I personally thank for introducing me to this information, but he's definitely paved the way. Now, again, recognizing these top 10 producers so far for this value month, we have the top client sales or protection plan membership enrollments, starting off with the one first number one position, Mr. Bruno Floridor. Next, Zandra Vajas, Erica Gonzalez, Raisa Otero, Nairobi Ali, Kendall Westbrook, Stephanie Lopez, Joseph Griffin, Dr. Arnold Bogarty, and Cindy Holloway. So go ahead and light it up in the chat. I know I muted everyone's line, but definitely go ahead and shout them out and congratulate them on their success. See, new client enrollments is a way for them to be that light of hope and opportunity for the next individual, just like we all received at one point or another. Next, we're moving on to our personal, uh, top personal sale pro sales producers. And again, this is nationwide within our entire team, Relentless Organization. Number one position held by none other than Vice President, Mr. Bruno Floridor, followed by Zandra Bajes. Next, Boss Lady, RVP Reza Ortero, our VP, Dr. Arnold Bogarty, Stephanie Lopez, Anthony Winters, EVP David Marquez, Kendall Westbrook, Nairobi Ali, and Joseph Griffin. So again, congratulations to you all, top producers. That's a big deal. That means you started off 2021 super duper strong. So again, a huge shout out and salute to you now. Moving right along, we have our top recruiters. So these are the top 10 individuals who have started out this new year, blessing other people by welcoming them onto this opportunity, giving them a chance for transformation and change. The number one spot right now by Ms. Astrid Elena Felix Leva with four new agent enrollments for this first for this first for this month, actually, so far, right? Followed by our VP Reza Ortero, next VP Bruno Floridor, Nairobi Ali, Melanie Mendez, Zandra Vajes, VG Quinones, Luis Rodriguez, Sanceria Arnold, and Anthony Kelly. So congratulations to each one of you. Definitely stepping it up, going ahead and blessing other people, growing, creating a movement, and deserving of acknowledgement and celebration. So I'm going to go ahead and clap for everybody because I know everybody's muted, but definitely congratulate them on the chat and understand these people are putting the work in, getting the results, and blessing other people. Now, moving right along to this training, listen, I got tipped off on what it is that we're learning about tonight, and I'm blessed and fortunate to know this individual, not only personally as a friend, but as well being alongside him and with him following his leadership and example and guidance with regards to this opportunity. He has definitely been a huge success story, a big impact, not only in my life, but to so many other individuals. I think he's a phenomenal problem solver, not only by introducing people to this solution and this program, but even amongst the entire organization, always giving, always giving, always giving. He's a God-fearing man. He's a husband, he's a father, he's a, he's a great friend. He's a phenomenal mentor, a network marketing professional, and a very impactful success story. Now this individual as well is currently an executive vice president with this opportunity. So if you don't know what that means yet, you need to find out, but I'm gonna tip you off a little bit because what that means is in one whole month, right? 30 days of business, this gentleman is responsible for creating a movement that's generating $500,000, right? <clears throat> I'm gonna say that again, half a million dollars in business revenue every 30 days. That's a big deal. So this is definitely someone you wanna learn from, someone I am always taking notes from. It's an honor for me to bring this gentleman on and just to be able to say, I know who he is. But again, please give it up, give your full undivided attention and be ready to learn from none other than our executive vice president, Mr. David Marquez, can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear, Myra. Thank you so much for that introduction. And um, I just wanna give it back to our Lord and savior, Jesus Christ. And um, I, I just, you know, I feel like, you know, every time people edify me, that it's important that we give everything due where it's due, right? Because I ain't nothing without him. And so I'm thankful. And you guys are going to learn why I'm so thankful. But, um, you know, it's a, it's a blessing, opportunity to, to reach one and teach one. So I just want to give it back to you, Myra, for always holding it down every single Tuesday night and doing such a, a great job at it. So thank you for all you do and all the leaders as well. So. Without further ado, I'm gonna share my screen and get started because I know you guys came to hear the nuggets. It's the new year. And so I wanna make sure you guys are prepared 
to hear what I got to tell you because you know I am gonna. Are you able to see my my screen? Yes. Okay. Cool. Awesome. So today I'm gonna talk to you guys about the mindset, and this was a great topic. You know, we as leaders always get up uh, once a week and just kind of provide feedback. And so this is all the leaders that are on here. And, and, you know, Xavier, our senior, you know, vice president basically came on and said, you know, what better way to start the new year than to get everybody with the right mindset. At the same time, you know, what Rezo or Tara is going to bring is going to be, I mean, straight fire. So I'm excited to hear and take notes. Guys, it's important. If you're not taking notes, you know, you're going to basically fall behind because you can't really, everything that you hear, you're only going to hear 50% of it. I mean, you're basically going to obtain 50% of it. And so unless you're writing it down, you're not going to be able to obtain it. So I got books for days and I've been an avid reader of this industry. And this is why my success is there. But before I talk to you about the mindset of 2021, right? I want to take it back, you know, to the beginning when I first started. Um, 2016, that's not really where I first started, but I want to start there so you can see where I was at, right? I, I know a lot of people know about well, the but none of you guys know the story. And if any of you are tuning in, if you could please mute your lines, that'll be great. Uh, but, you know, I had a broken mindset coming in. I was a convicted felon um, at, at an early age of 15 because of dumb choices, the people you hang around with right? You are a product of your environment. And that's really, you know, and I, and I don't blame it on them. It's also, you know, a blessing at the same time. And, and you'll find out why. But I was unemployable. I was unable to pay child support because of that, right? And I barely finished school. You know, uh, another leader had said one time, you know, um, C's and D's get degrees, right? You still pass. But one of the things I learned, you know, I was never really you know, the, the best student in school. You know, I barely graduated. I remember they called me into the office and they sat me down and they said, you know, and my mom was pleading with the principal saying if I could just walk the stage, like just fake it for our family members to see that they gave me a diploma. And, you know, it, it, it's crazy because I didn't pay attention in school like that. I was really frustrated and, 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 and you know, kind of in the wrong hands with the wrong people. But I was insecure about myself. You know, I felt like a failure. I already had two children and one on the way at this time. And I rented for over 12 years because of the conviction. I had to always go on classifieds and find owners that were renting. Otherwise I couldn't be on the lease. And then on top of it, I couldn't get a job to provide for my own family. And so I found a house we ended up moving in and it was rent, you know, we were paying rent on the house. We had a slumlord that lived up north and he wouldn't do anything to the house. You can see the pictures right there. I had the roof caving in from water. There was an AC above us. We had mold there. In that back room that you can't see is kind of gray. That was our daughter's room. That was Victoria. And there was termites in there. We had to literally find people to fix it. And, you know, I was just, I mean, I was at a breaking point back then. And so I started searching and um, started making my own money by becoming an entrepreneur. So I was forced to that. I became, you know, a, a DJ, which I DJed for over 13 years because of that. And I did develop a name and product and, you know, brand for myself. But it wasn't on what we're teaching, right? And the reason why I'm telling you this, you guys are going to understand why. Because a lot of you are doing things that have nothing to do with credit and you don't have people that know you as that. So don't act like you're that. You know, I remember when I first started and I started telling people, you know, they only remembered me as a DJ and probably the other ones as a convicted felon. So I really didn't have that influence. And so it was rough. It was tough for me. On top of that, I was thinking, hey, why not be a serial entrepreneur, right? I was, you know, I was DJing, but I didn't spend any time with my family. So I decided I was going to go ahead and, and, you know, open up a cell phone repair shop. I then kept the DJ business afloat because that's how I paid my bills. But I was hoping to get out of that so that I can be my own boss, right? But anybody that owns a business knows, you know, you don't really own the business. The business owns you. 
And so I was there, you see the open sign. I was there at eight in the a.m. We didn't leave till almost eight to 10 p.m. And then on the nights that I did get to leave early, I had to go set up and do a gig just so I can pay my rent at this house that you've seen here, right? It wasn't the greatest, you know, but it's what I had at the time. And so I was tired of this. And so I said, you know what? I need to get a house. And a lot of you know my story for those that don't, we were actually approved for a house and denied because of the child support. Six days left of closing, we ended up losing the house. So they told me I needed to get the child support off. I also needed to find established proof of in income. And so I ended up going and doing all of this. I mean, you can imagine, you know, we are, Dr. Arnold Bogarty said it, two jobs is for two people. I had three, I had this job, I had AM, PM marketing, right? While I was going to school for marketing, I had my cell phone repair shop and I had my DJ business. Imagine trying to take on another business, right? I did. So on top of that, I went and got my degree, right? As a convicted felon, I thought nobody would see me rehabilitated. I had to go and prove myself. So what did I do? I started going to school. I got my associate's degree at St. Petersburg College. I found this one because it was in December and it pulled up as you know a memory, but um, I call it a certificate, right? A bachelor's degree I ended up getting from USF, but I call it a BS degree, right? With the pun intended. Cause see, I graduated, you can see here, magna cum laude, right? That means I was really top of my class, but what did that matter? There was other people in there. Look at the degree that I, you know, I, I ended up getting my degree and majority of the people that do the same don't even get the, they don't even go and work in the field that they got their degree in. And so I had to really look at myself and see my why, you know, what hurt me. And that was it right there. This is what changed my vision and focus. And so guys, everything is 90% mindset. It doesn't matter about shit that you learn on paper. It doesn't matter how much notes you take. If you don't have the right mindset, it, it's not going to matter. And so this is why this was my, this was important to me. They told me to focus on my why and I did. And so this is what going in looks like. I took the main source of income that I had, my music equipment, and I pawned it for $320. And like $20. But you can see what happened in that time frame in those three years, what I've obtained since then. But it wasn't easy. I had to become a student. This was me. I was looking it up on my phone. 2016, reading your first year in network marketing. This was while my parents and family was on vacation. See, a lot of you will go on vacation and do that. Do you have what it takes to be somebody different for your why, right? And so I did that. Then I, they told me to go to, the, go to the trainings, go to the events. You see that? It says Momentum 2018, right? I was already a student for about a year and a half, two years. And that's us. You see Jackie, right? ESD Jackie holding up the banner. But, you know, we started this years ago, right? We were underground and um, just growing, fertilizing, watering, cultivating, reading. And so another, two great books, if you guys want to take a screenshot of this or write it down, your first year in network marketing taught me everything. You want to save, you know, eight to 10 grand, you read this book. I did not have to know everything about network marketing. This book showed me everything on my first year. And that's what helped me get by. And then another great book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And then we have Jeff Algebers down there with me and my wife. You see, when I attended one of those events and I actually got to see someone living proof, network marketer, you know, he made $40 million in 40 years. But the first 10 years were hell. He went through bankruptcy, divorce, you know, a repo. I mean, his story was phenomenal. And here he is cooking for us in front of me and my family who were strangers and taught us, showed us what it's like to be a servant leader. And this was in his, this is a picture in his 6,000 square foot game room. That's when me, my family and everybody saw what network marketing can really do. And so this picture I found, 
This is actually a picture, and this is one of the smaller events, but you can see where I'm seated at. I'm in the like almost by the nosebleeds. This was our actual picture. In fact, you can see us sitting right there, the whole team. And we would see people walk on stage. I think Arnold Bogarty was on that stage before. And we seen them walk on stage with their six figure ring. And I said, man, one day I'm gonna be up there, right? And I'm sure there was a lot of people that got broken. You know, look at the crowd. But the reason why I share that is because I knew also, you know, a lot of people come in this business and don't have the right mindset. If you're a new agent on here, please type a one in the chat so I know who's a brand new agent. Because I was never really taught, you know, the expectations. You know, they, it was pretty much simple for me. They hyped up all the million dollar earners. They ended up telling everybody that, you know, um, oh, I made it, you know, I became a, a six figure ring earner in, you know, 15 days. And to me, I thought like, wow, 15 days, man, I, that's it for me. I could, you know, my, my I'm going to be blessed, right? In, in a month or two, those were my expectations. But what I learned was that's not true, right? I felt like it was something wrong with me because I couldn't do it in 15 days. Hell, in this, in my first venture in, in network marketing, it was four months before I even got my Ford to waive my fees. But that's when I learned the real expectations. And so if you're taking notes, take these notes down here, right? When I learned about network marketing, right? And, and I found out about this industry because of my degree, you know? We're gonna go back and forth. So when I got this degree and I got it in marketing, I ended up learning about network marketing. I'm like, what is this network marketing I keep coming across? And that's when I started becoming a student. And so as I became a student, I started learning the real expectations. And it was like this, you know, my, my family, um, I, in the book, the first chapter, they call it the rejection rocket. My wife, they said, your spouse, your family, it's like opening up a restaurant for the first time. Nobody, if you tell your friends and family you're thinking of opening up a restaurant, they're going to tell you a million reasons why you shouldn't. They're going to tell you, you know, oh my God, you know, COVID, you know, what about the Food and Drug Administration? You know, most businesses don't succeed. They're going to talk you out of opening up a restaurant. But if you open up that restaurant and then you invite them to your grand opening, now they're all going to say, oh my God, David, I, I knew you would make it in this. I knew you, you know, it was such a great idea, right? Why is it? Because you made the decision, right? Subconsciously. So I made that decision and I became a student reading that book. And it told me that my wife, it told me that my family would all call me crazy. And I said, you know what? Let me put it to the test. So I went home and I turned on the lights. It was literally like this. And I flicked on the lights and I told my wife, excited, baby, I know what I'm gonna do. We're gonna travel the world. I'm gonna retire you. You're gonna be able to spend time with the kids and I'm gonna do network marketing and quit DJing for life. And she said, no the fuck we not. Turn off the lights, I need to go to work. And that would have blew most of you. And a lot of you probably chuckling and that's what I did because I, I tested it. And the crazy thing is, is it actually worked. So I kept reading that book. It showed me it. Then I learned about the formula one, three, five, and seven. One, treat it like, a, like you're a student, like school, right? Most people, most doctors go to school for eight to 10 years. Barbers, you know, a year, six, seven months. Most people go to school and don't get paid anything. Yet, then they get out of school and now they owe money, right? For, for the debt. I know that because I owe 50,000 for my college tuition, right? Or for my, uh, for, for my school, my degree. And so I decided that, well, if I'm not gonna get paid in school, why wouldn't I learn this profession if they said all I have to do is a year of that before I can actually B, not having to pay, at least get the products for free, right? Think about it. You see somebody at Costco's or Sam's Clubs, right? And they have a membership that they pay annually. 
And they do it so that they can get discount on bulk toilet paper, right? Just to save on that. They're not idiots, right? They're called smart shoppers. But yes, yeah, somebody that goes into network marketing, whether it's to travel for free, get free makeup, right? Get their credit fixed for free. They're called an idiot. Why is that? So think about it. And so I said, all right, fine, one, I will do that. That first year, if I made any money, I looked at it as bonus money. And that's what it was. I made bonus money, right? My wife told me the second year now we're marketing, I think we cleared seven grand, right? And this was going hard, but I was the student. See, your second year going to get your associate's degree, you didn't get paid seven grand. You probably owed that in books. And so that's what made me realize it. Okay, this is working. Then three, they said by three years, you would be, you know, at least you wouldn't have no overhead, no bill. You get the services for free. You'd be competent. And at least you'd be able to do this full time. So you're telling me I could stop DJing, stop the cell phone repair shop. And that's what I did. Guys, it took less than three years that we were able to hit that and accomplish it. And then five, five is how long it takes for somebody to actually become a serious income earner. We haven't hit five years, guys. I'm talking about the organization, me starting in 2016, right? We're going on it, but I would consider myself a top earner in this industry, right? That's to let you know these numbers are accurate, write them down. And it's not spelled right, but that's okay. I just put it together. So. The next one, the last one is the seven. Seven is how long it typically takes somebody to become world-class, you know? And that is what we're aiming for. And I hope you are too. If you are aiming to be world-class, type a seven in the chat. I need to know, I need to get everybody going. Please let me know. And then um, remember, stay strong. I always went back to my why. You know, when I had my wife, uh, when my wife and I had Victoria, we named her Victoria Grace because we wanted to make sure that, you know, God gave us grace for our child. And look at my daughter, Jaylani, feeding Victoria. You can see behind, we had pleather, right? We weren't living in the greatest conditions, but we made the best of what we could. And so I stayed with it. And so I also stayed plugged into the word. So this is the parable of the sower. I wanted to put this illustration up so you guys can, can see it, visualize it. In the Bible, Matthew 13, the, the parable goes like this. The sower is the farmer, right? He goes and he takes seeds out of his pockets. And this is how you should be in your business. He would sow. And it said the first seeds fell out of his pocket then the path. And the birds came down, scooped down and ate them. In your business, as you're planting seeds this new year, there will be birds. There will be a significant other, a spouse, a mom, a cousin, a friend that tells your prospect, what are you doing? Don't You don't need to go to that meeting. Swoop, bird just came and got him. But as a mentor, Jim Rohn said, don't go chasing the birds, right? If you chase the birds, you, lay, you leave the fields. What the sower do, he kept sowing. So then the sower eventually went and sowed in rocky places where they grew quickly, but there was no root. And the first hot day, the first hot day the sun came and scorched and the plant withered away. That's how many of you, many, you know, prospects or agents that you have, you know, they're excited, they're pumped, they're, you know, today they hear this training and they're fired up and what happens? Tomorrow, their first hot day, somebody they know tells them something and they wither away. You know what the trick is? You know what the, how the, the farmer succeeded? He kept sowing. So then he sowed and it landed. The seeds fell amongst thorny ground. Well, the thorny ground choked it. That's what's gonna happen, guys. All of these steps is gonna happen, but the main key, and you can see from the green arrow, is the farmer kept sowing. He did not stop sowing and eventually landed in good soil where he grew a harvest and the crop grew 30 to 60 and 100%. And that's another training. 
if anybody wants to plug into that, but I stay plugged into the word. It wasn't just network marketing. The Bible is one of the, is the greatest book that's composed of other books that will teach you and tell you exactly how you should live life as a servant leader. And so here's a couple of verses that I took and kept with me in my, you know, as I was starting my career in network marketing, it said to everything, there is a season, right? Season of somebody passing season of you, you know, I, I don't know how many times I had to rebuild my team, but it was the mindset I knew. It said to everything, there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. And then Ezekiel 34 says, I will send down showers in season. There will be showers of blessings. So I was, you know, I knew there would be blessings. I knew this was no mad, this was no pill. This was no magic beanstalk that eventually you would be able to go ahead and poof, magically appear and go into the clouds and get everything you wanted. That is not what this industry was. If it was, then everybody would do it. And so I set myself with the expectations. It was going to take time. And then boom, the transformation. Up top, that was the house that was crumbling apart that we were about to, that we did lose. But the house underneath it is the house that we actually got, right? And how did we get it? Because I never stopped sewing. I kept showing, as you can see there, I didn't even care. I didn't even care who it was. I just literally went through as many people as I could and knew that there was gonna be a harvest. And so this is one of my favorite verse, verses from Galatians. It says, and let us not grow weary while doing good for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. And so I knew eventually we would reap a harvest and then boom, came the blessings. You know, a lot of people see what I have now and don't know, you know, I was, I, I couldn't get a job. There was people that were making more than me and I, I literally had my ships burnt for me. And this is when we closed on our house, our child support judgment was removed because of the company, but I was able to go ahead and, and just preach and, and be a servant leader by teaching everything that was taught to me. Because if you're selfish and you keep everything inside, I mean, what good is it? And so I felt like I had to do my purpose and share it. But are you willing to do the same? See, everyone wants to be a beast until it's time to do what real beasts do. And so I learned you got to separate what is primary and what is secondary. We were just on a training with Eric Worre and the GoPro Accelerator. And the first day he came out and said, you need to determine what is primary and secondary in your life. You know, how many of you work a job right now? You know, it's okay. How many do this part-time? Drop a one in the chat. You know, it, it's, it's cool. I did it too. But see, I made this my primary, even though I was working. There's people on here that never missed a day of work, even during COVID, right? Because they didn't want to get fired. They didn't want to get let go. Well, you just told me what your primary thing is. Just know this, write this down. Your subconscious mind, right? Steve Martin, he's a comedian. He said, you have to surround yourself with comedians. That should be all you focus on, right? So you have your job here and you have network marketing here. You have to surround yourself and it's up to you. What, what's your primary? So ways to focus, right? What, and, and write this down if you're taking notes. Whatever is secondary, right? Whatever secondary, will be sabotaged by what is primary. And that's really what changed my mind. That's my mindset was so focused on that. So how do you do it? How do you focus on that? Vision boards, words of affirmation, right? Surround yourself with others and be committed, right? You wanna just not take the notes, but apply everything. And anytime you get triggered, anytime something triggers your mind and gets you off track, you got to be, you know, a lot of times I would get fearful. Sometimes you have that significant other that's in your ear telling you, you know, go get a job. You need to just work. I learned if you buy someone's opinion, you buy their lifestyle. 
And so I love my mother to death, but I'll take parenting advice from her. But how to be a millionaire and an entrepreneur, I won't take advice from my mother from that. Why? Because she never, she, she never was that. So it, you wouldn't take advice, you know, on parenting from somebody who has no children. So it's just being real. But as I said, as soon as you can change your mind, right, everything will fall in line. You have to be, you know, if, if you want to be a beast, you got to be willing to do that. You got to be willing to sacrifice and give things up. And then, then last but not least, instead of thinking of this as a, you know, beanstalk, a magic beanstalk where it happens overnight, think of it as the bamboo, right? Like the, like I always keep this bamboo plant. The bamboo seed will sit growing under the ground for five years. Oh. And then eventually, after watering it, it'll go ahead and sprout up and grow 90 feet, right? In 60 days. So how long did it really take for it to grow? A lot of people say five years, a lot of say 60 days. The real answer is all of it. Because if it was never watered and cultivated, it would have never grew to begin with. And so that's what it took. You know, a lot of people see my success within a year, 10 months, six figure earner in the company. No, it wasn't 10 months in the company. I was doing a year and a half, almost two years prior in that other company, right? It wasn't until I applied everything and took action and, and, and took it over to the top. And so just remember that in the mindset of 2021, you have to remember, it, it doesn't matter what the outcome result is. You have to detach your emotions from what they say and go through the numbers because it will pay off in the end. And again, if you wanna be a beast, you gotta do what beasts do. Uh, my name is David Marquez. Thank you guys for your time. And uh, I'm gonna give it back to you, Myra. Wow, thank you so much, David. Always killing it. That was some phenomenal information. Of course, I'm here being a student taking notes as well, but it is incredible and a good reality check because we do see your, your success at this point without knowing how deep, how deep in the trenches you really had to come up from. So again, a huge congratulations to you. Much continued success to both yourself and your Erika, because together the two of you resemble and reflect what hope is and what possible, um, what's possible when you decide to go ahead and stick it through. Understand, ladies and gentlemen, like you said, mindset is everything. If you think you can, you think you can't, you're right. But what's worth it in the end? You got to pick your heart. Hard at doing whatever you're stuck with at this point. You know those results already. Or is it worth going ahead and invest the time, taking a brief amount of years out of your life that are going to pass anyway for the possibility of what this type of opportunity can offer you, right? So think about it. Three to five years. I knew what it was like personally to walk away from 15 years in a job and leave with nothing. So hopefully that's none of you ever Hopefully you understand the value of what it is that we have in hand. So moving right along, we're going to step into the next session for our training. But I do have some reminders, right? Everyone should turn your cameras on. I mean, we want to see those faces, first of all. This is not one of those boring, stuffy, you know, business corporate type meetings. This is by option, a family ship. We have a team here. It's pretty much up us against the world. So just show your beautiful faces. Let us know. Let some of those trainers uh, pay them that amount of respect so that they know you're actually focused and paying attention to this. Um, and you're choosing to be here, choosing to be connected, choosing to grow with us and continuing to learn. Now, another thing as well, I know we'll have some ending remarks for tonight, but you want to be sure you don't miss out on our Roads to Riches Team Relentless contest right now. So if you pre-qualified already, huge congratulations to you. You have already been added to the group chat on Facebook. And if you haven't, let your leader know. Go ahead and plug in, share your screenshot, and you'll be added if you pre-qualified. But guess what? We want to give an opportunity to everybody, even those that are new, if you just got started today, you have a chance to pre-qualify. And how? By getting three enrollments by this Saturday. It's so possible. We have leaders that have gone ahead and done that in a day, in an hour. You could do, you know, family specials, have a his and hers, whatever the case is, get the word out there. There's so many people that want 2021 to be their year. We have the privilege to introduce them to a salvation and an opportunity to do so. Now, as I said, moving right along to our very second trainer for tonight. I have a ton of respect for this lady. She came in the game, just killing it. No prior experience to what this industry could do for her. 
but she's such a huge success story, a tremendous powerhouse of a lady, made all three charts, without a doubt, that's consistent with her track record. But at the same time, she could share her success story because maybe she doubted at some point, maybe she didn't think that uh, she knew what this was about, but she gave herself this as a task. She made it her primary. She's broken records across not only the team, but company-wide, nationwide, topping the charts. So this is someone that when she speaks, you want to really pay attention to, give yourself a chance to learn by her experiences, always bringing that heat, always bringing that knowledge. She's phenomenal at training, a trainer's trainer. She's a regional vice president, so she's responsible for $250,000 in business volume every 30 days. And she's an r and r level one club member so she's a beautiful company paid for benz because of her efforts and she's done it in a remarkably fast time did our regional vice president miss Raisa ortero can you hear me okay i know you're connected but can you hear me i am i am thank you so much myra thank you, got you for it. always coming in with that fire uh, man oh my god i just want to thank you for uh putting this together i want to thank our mentor xavier marrero i love these trainings like I, i'm here like uh, so I want to give it back to David. You killed it. Uh, I, I took so many notes. A lot of people don't think we still take notes, you know, like we still take notes. And, uh, you know, I like the suggestion with the books. I remember reading those when I first got started. Um, just a suggestion too. I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad uh, through Audible. It's available on YouTube. So you don't even have to go out and buy it. Uh, I, I literally was driving around my city in Springfield, Mass, listening to that book. And I'm like, oh my God, this makes so much sense. Um, so good suggestions there. And everything that you said, David, I mean, I, as you were going through your transitions in your slide, I remember going through those stages. You know, I remember the moment where I said, I'm gonna become a student of the industry. I remember the moments I got rejected when my mom thought I was crazy when I quit corporate America. Um, I, <laughs> I can almost hear your Erika screaming at you, by the way. Um, but I love you guys. Thank you for everything that you guys do and all the knowledge that you guys bring to the table but I never missed an event. I remember the first training I got and they're like, don't you dare miss anything. And I, I really don't miss anything. And that's really the key to success. The difference between the people at the top and the people that are not having the success is you will literally see gaps in your consistency. Um, so again, going back to the Gold Pro Accelerator, the primary, I love that. The, that first session was so powerful because I remember putting this primary I remember saying, man, I used to be at work texting people, okay? So this was primary for me. And so you have to put your mindset and you have to make everything work around this business because I'm telling you, it will change your life. So thank you. I'm committed. I'm learning. I'm applying. Uh, and thank you for that powerful training. I appreciate you guys. So I get to come in and actually do some hands-on training with time management. Who's excited? Woohoo, right? Um, what I, <laughs> uh, I hear a lot that people struggle with time management and it's the single most important thing of your business, right? Think about when you clock into work every single day, there's a structure to your day. There's literally a time you clock in and I bet you, you clock in on time, right? If not, you're in trouble. There's a time where you got to complete certain tasks before a certain amount of time. There's a time you go on lunch, there's a time you go on break, there's a time you clock out. And in between, there's so many assignments. Why is it that when we come into our business, we don't do that, right? So time management is one of the major components. And so I'm going to first give you guys some tips on time management. And then I'm going to go into how you can actually start managing your time in an effective way. So first, I want to talk about some of the uh, how successful people manage their time. So a few tips, and then we'll go into how I personally manage my day. Um, and we always say that if there's nothing in your calendar, you ain't getting a paycheck. No calendar, no coins. So look at your calendar right now for the rest of the week. Can you open your Gmail calendar? Is there gaps? Is there gaps? Like there's nothing in there. You have no structure to your business. That can be why you're not seeing success. The most successful people, billionaires, entrepreneurs, multiple people that were studied in the Olympics, professional sports people manage their time properly. So how successful people manage their time? Let me show you guys a, a statistic that I found. 41% of the items people put on their to-do list are never done at all. 
So if you're sitting there every day and you're writing a little to-do list, I bet you if you go back to all your to-do lists, you're like, oh my God, I never did any of these. A to-do list is literally a graveyard of important but not urgent tasks. And that's why 41% of those items are never done at all. All right, time is life, guys. If you lose money, you can make it back. If you get sick, you can get healthy, but you never get time back. Those blocks in your calendar, matter of fact, I challenge you to go back to last week, the week before, a month before, two months before, since the time you started this business and look at all those blocks in your calendar that are empty. You lost all that time. And you sit here and wonder why, why am I not having the success of these top producers on the top charts? Why? I need more mentorship. You make excuses. I need this. I need more one-on-one. No, you need more productivity and you need to get structured with what you're doing in your time. So here are some, um, I put together six time management tips. I mean, if you use all of them, great. But if you, if you at least take or three, two or three out of this, you're going to get a lot more out of your day. All right. So let's talk about first things first. How many minutes are there in a day? You guys want to write this number down somewhere in your house, 1400, uh, I'm sorry, 1,440 minutes a day. That's a lot of minutes. How many minutes are you letting go by every single day and you're not building your business? This number is crucial to understanding where balance is and how your time is structured properly every single day. So here we go. Tip number one, time is one of your most valuable assets. Once you realize that, so the first step is realizing, oh my God, I just went back three months. I didn't have nothing in my calendar. I am wasting my time. My time is valuable. Realize how important your time is because like I said earlier, billionaires, entrepreneurs, celebrities, they know the value of time. They do not allow anyone to waste it. They only focus on things. They immerse themselves on things that make them successful. All right, type of one in the chat. You guys following? Good, good info. Tip number two, identify your MIT. Every day you got, you have important tasks. What is your most important task that you have to get it done? What makes you money? What gets you promoted? You know, schedule time to do that MIT. Set an hour or two in the morning. We are most effective in the morning. I know I am right when I'm sipping my coffee. That's like my most effective time of the day. If you try to talk to me before my coffee, I will not talk to you, <laughs> right? So again, that's when you have the most clarity. And that's just my personal opinion. So if you got to be at work by eight, guess what? Wake up a little earlier, get that most important task done, and then move on to the rest of your day. All right. Now, number three, work from your calendar. So I'm going to actually really dive into this here in a second. So this is like the main focal tip that I'm going to focus on today. But you work from your calendar, not from your to-do list. We just discovered that that's the graveyard, right? So stop using a to-do list. It's the number one secret to productivity. Four, overcome procrastination. How? By beating your future self. You know why you wake up in the morning and you're like, I don't know what to do today. I want to build my business. I don't know what to do because you don't plan ahead. The day before you should be planning tomorrow's tasks so that you can beat that procrastination that you know you're already going to have. If you're already a procrastinator, you got to beat yourself. You got to beat your future self. So for instance, if you are uh, saying to yourself, I want to go work out, I'm going to go to the gym, and you know you're going to procrastinate about it, the first thing you're going to say, oh, I don't have workout clothes, right? It's dirty. So make sure the day before you have your workout clothes right next, right? Right next, or your alarm. You know you're not going to wake up in the morning you're one of those snoozers. So put your phone far away. So, so you got to beat yourself until you develop a habit. All right. So those are the things overcoming procrastination. There will always be more to do. Can we agree, David? Can we agree, Arnold? Can we agree? There's all, our, our job is never done. <laughs> the day ends when we're tired. Literally today, I have woke up today. I have been not like nonstop today. Like today's just been a crazy day. I haven't even had a minute to breathe. So 
your day ends when you're tired because you can't say, oh, when I'm done, because you're never done. And you have to acknowledge that. But if you manage your time better, you're going to understand being an entrepreneur, you're never going to be done. All right. And tip number six, always carry a notebook. Always. Every successful entrepreneur has a notebook. It is the single most important possession in your little notebook. Can you guys show me your notebooks? Okay. Okay. I like these little black notebooks at Target. I have like 10 of them filled already, but I like them because they look kind of professional, right? Instead of, but this is my life, okay? As soon as I sit out on a meeting, on a call, on anything, I could be, you know, literally I take it with me everywhere. It's the single most important possession is your, your little notebooks, your notes, so that you can actually go back to them. Yet there's something about writing, like sometimes I don't go back to them, but since I write it, I already remember it. Like I'm like, I remember physically writing that. There's just something about doing that. Um, so, all right. So now we're going to talk about how to maximize your calendar. Okay. So like I said, I'm going to focus more on that. How many of you type a, one in the chat? If you have Gmail, if you have Gmail, type a one in the chat. All right, cool. If you don't, let's get one, okay? For the purpose of this training, <laughs> all right? Now, be honest, be honest. Whose calendar's empty tomorrow? Whose calendar's completely empty tomorrow? <laughs> They're not gonna write. They're not gonna write that, right? <laughs> uh, but, I okay. Honest, Marisa, I said mine is empty. <laughs> okay, good, okay. <laughs> all right. So just understanding that having an empty calendar really, 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 really means you won't get a paycheck, all right? Because you're not structured with your time. So here you're looking at my Gmail calendar, being very transparent with, with my Gmail today um, with you guys. Let me minimize this so I can see. So as you can see, today, Tuesday, look at this. Boom, 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 boom. Where do you see anything empty in my calendar today, right? Tomorrow's already set too. And uh, one of the things I do is I pre-plan the day before. I don't like to pre-plan a week or two, three months in advance because things happen, right? We're entrepreneurs, we move things around. So the day before I'm planning the next day and then the next day, that way I don't get too overwhelmed with my calendar and I don't feel like I'm completing my task, all right? I schedule everything, you guys. All right, so let's, let's change my view real quick and let's look at my day. I schedule my personal development. I add in my morning prayer, power start my day with Nicola. I make sure I put time for breakfast. <laughs> uh, I had a one-on-one -on -one today with a few agents. I followed up and exposed. I onboarded two clients. I tap rooted. I was on the GoPro accelerator training. I launched two agents. I launched two other agents. I prepared for the relentless training. I had a leadership call right before this. And here I am right now on this training. Pretty productive day, right? And guess what? Everything got done. Why? Because it's in my calendar. Everything is set and in motion and it's telling me reminders come up on my phone. I'm like, okay, I know exactly what I'm doing. Boom, 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 boom. All production, right? So now let me show you guys how to maximize this. So on your phone, it's going to look a little bit different, but same concept at the bottom is going to be a little plus button. Okay. Okay. Another tip I want to give you guys is that you can actually uh, sync your band calendar for Relentless, you can sync it to your Gmail. So as you can see, all of the purple stuff, these are our band calendar uh, events that are synced to our Gmail. So now I'm not missing training, okay? And uh, I want you guys not to miss training. And I don't wanna hear the excuse about, I don't have the Zoom. I don't know the link. I, I don't know what time. Why? Because all you gotta do is sync the band calendar to the actual Gmail and boom, now you have reminders. Now you have the Zoom meeting right in front of you. So as you can see, I can go to my calendar, click on the link, I'm already on the train. All right, good info so far guys, good info so far. Um, there is a, uh, so if you wanna learn how to sync the band calendar, you might have to go on YouTube and just do a tutorial search or I'll go ahead and, and um, I'll give instructions on it later. It will take too much time, but you can sync your calendar to your Gmail. 
All right, so that's tip number one on your calendar. All right, so you can actually hit create here, okay? So you will hit create and you start to create your day. Now, it's very important that you are specific. How many of you feel like you don't know what to do every day? For to, to type a one in the chat, if you feel like, I just don't know what to do. How do I fill my calendar, Raysa? Right? Okay, so that's when we go to the 888 cash calendar. It's called the cash calendar because, I mean, when I sat down with Nicola Smith Jackson, the first thing she said is, where's your 888 cash calendar? What's your, what's, your, what's your calendar look like tomorrow? And I'm like, oh my God, it's empty. And I had that realization. So trust me, I've been where you are, okay? So the 888 calendar consists of eight hours of work, eight hours to sleep, and eight hours to build your, your, your dream. So everybody has 24 hours a day. So it's kind of like a way to figure out where are you, where are you putting your time? So as you can see, I spend a lot of time on personal development and I always do it in the morning. That's to me, guys, that's my most important task. That's my most important task because that's what's growing me into a leader. Does that make sense? So I'm like, I'm gonna do that in the morning. I'm gonna get it done. That's my most, I cannot sacrifice being a student. That's not, that's not even in the works and I got to do it every day. All right. So whatever it is that you do 30 minutes, an hour, personal development needs to be in your calendar every single day. What are you reading? What are you listening to? Who are you sitting down with? What leader are you talking to? I, I don't know what tape, what CD, I don't know. Right. Whatever. Uh, so that has to be in your calendar. So boom, I just gave you something to put in your calendar for the rest of the week. And I'll show you how to put it on repeat Monday through Friday. Okay. Then you got to schedule your family time and your personal responsibilities. So for instance, today I had a call for, for health uh, to get our health medical. That was in my calendar. So I'm like, I'm not scheduling nothing around that. That's personal. Family time, obviously very limited on family time today. I told Rob, I'm like, I'm sorry. There was really no family time today, but some days it just be like that, okay? Now, promoting. Promoting is huge. If you have a team, you need to promote events. You guys need to be promoting. You need to set time to promote this contest that Xavier is putting out. You need to set time to promote tonight's training. Where are you doing that? Because you're going to forget. So where are you promoting? Where are you promoting that people got to be on the Super Saturday on tomorrow's webinar? Are you promoting on your social media that to, to get people on the webinar? Boom. You need time for that. Expose and response. When are you posting? When are you on social media? When are you posting about credit? What time are you posting about an uh, agent? What time are you posting lifestyle? When are you providing value on social media? When are you going live? And when are you responding to your leads? At what time? At what time? And how much time? Some of you guys are just all over the place, right? When are you following up? When people message you, when are you following up? They tell you, I don't have money. What's your follow-up date? How do you follow up with people? What is your schedule? How many days do you follow up two days? You follow up after a week? Who are you following up with? Are they in your little notebook? No, how are you gonna follow up? Team and business management. When are you doing trainings? If you're a sales director and above, you need to be doing trainings and webinars. You're stepping into leadership. You have a team. If you're a field, senior field trainer, you got agents under you. If you're a field trainer, you got agents under you. You need time for team and business management. When are you connecting with your team? When are you building their relationships? When are you getting to know them? When are you getting to know their why? When are you training them? When are you telling them that personal development is important? When, when are you actually managing your business? And then last but not least, be involved. Be involved, be on the trainings. Anything, be, you know, be involved in the chats, get involved in the testimonial groups. Put content in the Relentless, you know, be a supporter in the Relentless uh, Facebook group. Testimonies, results. When are you involved in your business, right? So I just told you what the things that you could do. Good info. Type one in the chat, good info. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to schedule this stuff, all right? So if you work a nine to five or five to nine, whatever, you need to put your work schedule in because there's just no getting out of that, right? But you got to put it in your calendar too, right? 
if you go on lunch break at work from 12 to one and you're like, you know what, I could work during that time, make that sacrifice. So make sure you're doing an event saying, I'm gonna expose and respond or I'm gonna follow up or I'm gonna post something, right? Anyway, so you just go to create. It's very simple guys, create an event. Um, Siri works amazing. I'll say, hey Siri, please create an appointment tomorrow to follow up with Melissa at 5 p.m. to 5.30. And literally Siri puts it in my Google calendar. So that's just another tip um, when I'm on the road, right? Cause I don't wanna be typing. So event at what time? So you could change it. If it's something that you're gonna repeat every day, you can change it here daily. I'm gonna do it weekly just on Tuesdays. So for instance, for me, prayer, you know, prayer is daily. Um, there's a lot of tasks that are daily. Um, I even have picking up my son at the bus stop because we're entrepreneurs and we get busy. And there, there was one time where I thought I missed Jaden at the bus and I was freaking out because I was on a call. And I'm like, oh my God, I need to put this in my calendar. <laughs> okay, so that's how serious it really gets. And I'm like, oh my God, people are gonna say I'm a bad mom but it just happens because we get so involved, right? Okay, another thing is, let's say you have an appointment with a prospect. Let's say you have a call with a prospect. Um, how many of you experience people not showing up? Type of one in the chat, you call them, they're ghosts. They forgot about the call. They don't remember. They're like, who are you? They hang up. Like, hey, we had a client call today. You told me through Messenger, it was today at two. You know why they didn't show up? Because you didn't do your part. The first thing I do when I schedule a call with a client or an agent is I get their email address. And then I said, I'm going to send you a, a Google Calendar invite. Make sure you accept it. All right. And now I'm putting the description. I'm putting the Zoom here under the description. You can actually enter the Zoom ID that you want them to come into. You can do Google Me. I just learned about Google Me. They can, if you got Google, you can FaceTime video conference. You don't even need Zoom. So now you just hit add Google Meet or com, uh, Google Meet conferencing and that person will show up right on your screen. So you don't even need Zoom for potential calls and agents, right? Uh, the other thing I'm doing is in the description, I'm putting something enticing so that they get on the call. See, you guys need to use this as a sales pitch. So for instance, this is what I'm doing. Let's say I have someone that I'm talking to tomorrow about the agent opportunity. And excuse me, so exploring, and I know I spelled that wrong, thank, thank God for, uh, so let's go. Ah, so exploring the FES income opportunity. Doesn't that sound more exciting than just a, hey, a Google invite, right? And the next thing I'm doing is I'm going into my FES website under the business opportunity. And literally all I'm doing is copying and pasting. Where do you wanna see yourself in the next five years? Boom. And I am adding it as a description. Boom, all right? And we're talking tomorrow and I'm gonna add uh, I'm at Lucinda, right? Adding Lucinda. She's going to be the one that gets this email invite. It's tomorrow. And I would add, the only thing I would add here is my Zoom. Zoom, meeting ID, boom, right? So we put this on for 11 today, right? Would you like to send the invitation to the guests? Send, boom. Lucinda got it now. This is what it looks like. Of course I wanna be on that call. Yes, I cannot wait, right? So, okay, example, you can use this for webinars. So let's say there's a webinar tonight at eight. All you gotta use is this one invite. So look, it's already telling me I got a call with Lucinda. All you gotta do is just use this one invite and continue to add people to it. So you would just hit edit and then we'll go ahead and add Cherie, right? Yeah, she said she's coming on today, bet. All right, save, boom, right? So that's, uh, oh, sorry, I, I, I got out. So hit save, and now it sends it to Cherie too. So my leaders are probably like, what the heck is she sending me right now, okay? That is how you properly get someone to get on a call or a webinar, all right? 
So that's just, so now you want to create that for everything, promoting events, your personal time, your family time, your lunch time, your break time. I mean, your 14 and 1440 minutes needs to be accounted for every single day. I don't care what you could put a block from four to seven. That's family time with my kids. Nobody better bother you between four or seven. Okay. Because you already have it in your calendar. So you didn't double schedule yourself. All right. So again, super important. Another thing you can use the Google calendar for is for creating tasks. I use this for when someone tells me I'm going to get started Friday. So enroll Raisa. And what I do is she tells me Friday, boom, I save it. And it literally, uh, I actually do it without a time. So I'll put it all day. I don't put a time to it. And then I just hit save. What happens is it's at the top of my task for the day. So when I open my calendar in the morning, I'm like, oh, Raisa told me she's enrolling today. That's my MIT. Remember I told you guys about the MIT? That's the first thing I'm doing in the morning. Who's on my task? Who said that we're going to get started today? Because if not, you guys are going to forget. Are you guys writing this like on a notepad, getting started Friday? You forget. You don't remember when people tell you they're going to get started, right? Another thing you could do is reminders. I like the task better. Um, so going back to today, you can color coordinate your events as well. Um, so obviously you can say, Hey, the red is the most important. So I, I like to have it colorful so I can see what's going on all the time. Um, but yeah, guys, look, if your calendar's empty, I suggest to start filling in these gaps and start filling it up with this cash calendar stuff on things that you should be doing. Because even as a leader, I was slacking on this and I was like, hold on. I really need to get my stuff together with this. And then also the power of getting people on the session with inviting them with an actual Google invite because you are a lot more professional when you do that. Um, and I think that's it. That's kind of like the training. Um, you can add different calendars. So for instance, I have a CRM system, so it's synced to this, meaning that if someone books a consultation on my website, I have that calendar synced to this, so I'll see it. So for instance, this new agent launch, my agent booked it through my website. So it automatically synced on my calendar. And then of course, um, I have the, uh, the group calendar, which is the band calendar. As you can see, if I click on it, it it'll take away the band calendar, but obviously I leave them there because I want to see that. Um, but I think that's it, guys. Look, this Google calendar is amazing. Um, you guys can look at it by day, week. Right, you can look at it by month and really start to maximize every single time of your day. I guarantee you guys, I guarantee you that if you start doing this, you are going to see massive results in your business because you're showing up. Because now, number one, you do what David told you, you're putting this primary. The second thing you're doing is you're getting structured in your day of what you're doing every single day. I'm telling you guys, compounded success. A little bit every day goes a long way. I don't care if you're working this business, two hours, three hours, four hours, put it in your calendar and I guarantee you, you will get it done. Make sure you're using every 1,440 minutes a day to build your dream. Thank you guys, hopefully that was helpful. Back to Myra. Thank you so much, Grace, for that. I definitely know that's somewhere I've struggled with over the years. I'm sure there was a lot of uh, knowledge that many will be able to implement and showing the visuals. I mean, a lot of people just learn not only hearing it, but actually seeing it. So thank you for taking the time and having the thought behind sharing those steps because it's true, this is something new. And most of us prior to this, with a job, you're given a schedule. You're given a task. You're told what to do. And it's a lot more simple in that sense. But at the same time, this is so much more rewarding because you can use and maximize those tools that are already there and available. I mean, who doesn't have a Gmail email, right? So again, thank you so, so much for that. It speaks volume to how much you always have that structure and that skill set. I appreciate it. And I know the whole entire team was thanking you in the chat. So of course, this will be a, re a recording that we take full advantage of for sure. Now on to our closing session. You know, we've heard his name a couple of times throughout the night and if you know anybody or if you need to know anybody with regards to Team Relentless, you're going to know this individual. You're going to want to get to know this individual. He's the whole reason, the whole drive, and the whole 
relentless and fresh, if you ask me. Our senior vice president, Xavier Marrero, is the cause and the movement behind all of us that are here, because if not for him, this team wouldn't even be around. And I know that for himself, none of this was even available for him when he first got started. You know, I thank him personally for not leaving me behind with this journey, but for so many people, he's been a direct cause for transformation in life. He's a blessing. He's an honor to know. He's a true story of success, having built up his way from the bottom all the way to the top and not stopping at this point. Again, a senior vice president generating a million dollars in business revenue monthly. And, you know, we got to celebrate his birthday this past weekend, but every single day, I feel like there's so many people that get to celebrate the upgrade of their whole life and the quality of living they can afford for their family nowadays. Thanks to his bravery, thanks to his commitment. And uh, our senior vice president, Mr. Xavier Marrero, can you hear me? I don't think he's gonna come on. He just texted us a little while ago. Uh, he's traveling. Ah, okay. So I meant to say it at the end, so my bad. Um, but yeah. No I problem. The of our mentor anyways. So I think it's only right that we share that. But um, I don't think he's coming on. So just ex excuse him. He's, he's, uh, he's traveling right now, but he told us to close it out. He told us to handle it. Um, and we killed it today. So thank you, David. Thank you, Myra, for everything that you guys do. Remember to be the group, the contest, guys. I know, David, you should throw something in here about this contest real quick. Um, yes, listen, guys, I want to tell you, um, you want to make sure, look, we ended up talking as leaders that everybody uh, deserves to get into this contest. And so if you are a new agent, if you didn't hit that goal, of getting that enrollment, you still can do it this week. All you have to do is get three enrollments. And it's the first week of the year. If you can't get three enrollments for your family members that wanna change their life and do better, then you obviously ain't talking to the people. So I'm telling you, get in this contest because it's gonna be worth your entire, I mean, it's changed my life. That guy, I mean, I don't even wanna leak any nuggets. I was about to. Oh, but I'm going to tell that's you this out. much. You want to make sure that you get three enrollments this week. So other than that, you know, enroll your dog, enroll your mom, enroll whoever. Let's get it. You know, I, I mean, the phenomenal training. I got pages of notes from Razor and uh, I'm going to apply everything I learned. And I mean, just thank you all for sharing those nuggets. Look, she didn't have to do that. There's people that don't financially benefit. And that's how we are, man. We just share nuggets this is different than your job your job you don't want people to outperform you because then you're going to get fired here we want everybody to win so remember that get your three and let's get it god bless everybody may we all be in the year of the harvest 2021 let's get it good night everybody have a blessed evening good night, good night. thank you Good night, everybody. Thank you. Good night. 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 Bye. Good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.